to read this book non-stop for two years. Non-stop. In hundreds of translations or hundreds of translations. She read it and read it over and over, every single day, over and over and over. Once she read it backwards. <laughs> because she read it forward so many times that she's the guy who gets to say, let me see what will it be like to read it backwards. So she reads word by word from the back, from the end toward the beginning. Wow. And she got amazing revelation just reading it that way. It's hilarious. But ask her to explain to you. So I won't go into that. But all I can tell you is this. She, she's got an amazing explanation of this seemingly contradicting scripture. Yeah, well, what about the flesh and the spirit, the war? Yeah. Ask her about that war. Let it explain to you. All I can tell you is this. All I will tell you is this. The whole chapter is about those who have fallen from grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shows up the flesh. Well, of course, where are you? You've drifted. You've gone in the ditch. Everything shows up there. Devils, old girlfriends, everybody shows up. <laughs> Boyfriends. It shows up. Because you're not in the highway horns. You say you were running nobly. What happened? Who put an obstacle to you? So these guys have got messed with. Religion messed with them. Chapter 3 says, Oh foolish Galatians. The uh, Jewish Bible says, Oh stupid Galatians. And the Philip Bunch says, Oh, you dear idiots of Galatians. <laughs> so religion True. wants to make you stupid and really make an idiot out of you. So please don't let that happen. Don't let religion mess with you. Don't let them get the, off the place of grace. You're seated in heavenly places. For, for heaven's sake, stay there. Don't go down. Don't get anything to slip you up, to get you into some pit that you, you came out of. Don't go on there. The whole, in fact, the whole, not just the whole chapter, this chapter starts to be fallen from grace, meaning lose from Christ. Can this possibly be? Can even this be possibly be? He says, it's not like you're losing your salvation, but you lose from the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. What's he say? Yeah. The power of Christianity is based on clear revelation of Christ in you. That's what Christianity is based on. You lose that. What do you got? Your self-effort. Yeah. Eventually, the flesh shows up. It was gone. By the way, those who, those who, are, those who belong to Christ, it's clear. It's that they have crucified flesh with passion. So it's already done. I was just reading the spirit of circumcision. That took care of it. But you lose sight of that. All kinds of things showed up. All kinds of giants look huge. All kinds of problems appear to be bigger than you. Well, what kind of eyes are you looking at? Mm -hmm. You know? Before whose eyes he was clearly uh, crucified. That's what happened to you. Christ was so clearly portrayed as crucified. You lost sight. Mm -hmm. You know? The whole book is about somebody who's got bewitched. So mm -hmm. have that perspective when you read that controversial scripture. Mm -hmm. Just get the context of everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know? So let's go back to reality here. Back to the Colossian, because it says in him you're circumcised, sinful nature has been cut off, stripped off. The word is very violent, stripping off the body of sin. The body of the flesh. King James says the body of sin, the body of flesh. That's exactly what Christ came to tackle. Boom! Came to destroy what kept you slave. Jesus came to destroy what kept you bondage and in slavery. You know, the lie of Satan. What is a sinful nature? Has anybody thought about that? I made that enough for 25 years. I'm still getting the relations of what it is. It's Satan's ways, sinful nature, Satan's ways. It's, it's the nature of how you do things. It's, the, it's, it's the, the nature of things, you know. You have a human nature, you have sinful nature, and you have divine nature. Human nature doesn't necessarily mean sinful, you know. Human nature is human nature. So sometimes they they, they they try to say human nature is the flesh. Well, well, it's just a human nature, okay? What is the nature of human nature? Human nature is a container. Yeah, human nature is kind of like this this plastic, uh, this bag. This, this thing is a container. What's in it? <laughs> Whatever you put in it. Mm -hmm. If it's water, it's a, it tends a water bottle. You put poison, it's a whole different, it's bottled, but it's filled with poison. So it, it, 
it 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 becomes it, it the function become changes according to what's containing what is it containing in it. So humans are, are containers. The Bible says we are containers. We are we are earthen vessels with a treasure. You know, it used to be full of garbage, but now you just took that and now you fill it with yourself. So we are a container. So some humans are filled with demons, others are filled with the Holy Ghost. So human nature is a host. You know, the host is. You can host a demon and you can host the Holy Ghost. So you're hosting. It's like a, a, a container. Except this mm. container has a bottom and you don't. Because this is self contained. But you are grafted, you are a branch. Mm. There's a difference between this and a branch. Branch is no beginning, no end. Like you're connected and out of <clears throat> flows fruit, you know. This is cat and, and a bottom. It's self contained, it's independent. You're not independent, you're a branch. Liquid flows, but it, it doesn't sit there, it flows. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you graft it in the vine. And the vine, he's the vine where the branches, right? He's the vine. So what's the good thing about it is when you graft it, then what's in the vine goes through you. Right? Goes yeah. through you and brings what? Fruit. What kind of fruit? Love, yeah. Love, joy, yeah. Often we take love like it's our fruit. Well, it's ours in a sense because it goes through us. But let's not forget that the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Galatians, Galatians 5, 22, the work which His presence within accomplishes. Mm. Hello. That's an amazing translation. Amplified. Written by a woman. Yay, ladies. Good translation. It explains things. Kind of like my wife. She doesn't just say something. She just says it over and over. I get it. <laughs> Until I give it that. I got to look. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. Oh, good. Okay. No. And... So your container, but like a hose, flows through you. So his nature flows through you, Holy Spirit, and his presence within you accomplishes something. The works, he was working, Holy Ghost is working. He's working, working constantly in us as we're connected with him. He's working and producing love. His work produces love. His work produces joy. It's all that, it's his work, his effort, what Jesus did and now the Holy Spirit is implementing it. He's a hard worker. He's a relentless. Want to flood the world with joy through you. Peace. Work with the Holy Spirit. Peace. Through you, he makes peace with things. You go in there and on peace, all of a sudden you go in there and peace starts to come out of you. And people quit fighting. Why? Right? Because substance of peace is in you. And as long as you believe it and you let the Holy Ghost use you, he'll Fill the room or the place or the nation, whatever, with peace. It's a mystery of reconciliation in you. Christ is you know, bringing peace, right? Patience is not something you, you do, something you are, something He is in you. And He's like, hey, I'm patient. You know? I'm eternity. I mean, no, no time to worry. You know, it's patience because He connected with that eternal nature, you know? And then you see things from totally, you're not upset, some line, you go, oh man, I got the Holy Ghost here. Hey, do you need some uh, healing there? And you know, they're using the line for some benefit. You know, waiting, waiting. And the Lord, they're using it for something. You know, you're not just sitting, but something is getting going on. Time to pray, time to witness, whatever, you know. Yeah, and so on. All, all these fruit of spirit, kindness, gentleness, all that, it's just like, Working in you, he's working in you. As long as your connection with him is tight and unbroken, it's flowing. So, two things can stop the situation from being good. Number one, it tries to break the the enemy tries to break the connection. Kind of like, you know, if you go to sleep with. Your arm underneath your under arm underneath your body. What happened? Wake up in the middle of the night with a cold piece of meat under your arm, right? Yeah. What's that? Oh. You can't even move it. Because it's like dead. It's like a dead liver. Oh, what's that?